welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And today I am back to do a tag, and this is the personal canon tag that was created by Taylor over Made Between the Pages, and I am going to link her video and her channel down below. She is an amazing fantasy reviewer on here on booktube and I loved the concept of this video and I think that many of you are going to like this as well so just to start with if you like this concept you are not tagged please do it and let me know so then I can watch it but the idea of this is what books throughout your life has shaped you as a reader and who you are and there's different categories. And so the different categories are early childhood. So this is before you read by yourself. Like basically what did your parents read to you? Then we have childhood, early elementary age. So this is where you've started to read yourself. Then we have early adolescence. So this is like late elementary, middle school age or junior high. So basically, I would say from I think 10 to 14 time, pe time period. The next category is adolescence, which is high school. And then she puts young adult as college age. And for her, she said that adolescence and young adult kind of went together. For me, there's just so many books that I have separated them and kept the two things separated. And then the last one is if you are old enough if you're out of college adulthood so I am and so I have that fifth category and so the idea is to name three books from for each stage and she broke the rules so you can as well I am trying very hard not to break the rules because otherwise my adolescent <laughs> just said myself otherwise my adolescence young adult and adulthood would just be a ton of books. So starting with early childhood. We started reading books to our daughter when she was old enough to sit on our lap, about six months. So of course it was fabric or hard cardboard books and, and just pointing out colors and shapes. But then we started telling her stories. So as she got older, we would then go to paper books and one of her series that she enjoyed was Dr. Seuss. She especially liked the story Hop on Pop. In <coughs> fact, she liked it so much, she would have me on the floor and she would take running, well, at 18 months, running as fast as she could, and leap as much as she could, and she liked hearing the <clears throat> as sound she effects. Hopped on pop. She liked sound effects. The sound effects were very important to her. But the story was also important to her because we actually had to say the story along with the sound effects. And it got to the point, she had memorized the story. I could have that book upside down, in the dark, she didn't care. But if I missed a word, she would say, no, do it the right way. So we learned very quickly that we had to have it memorized or we had to actually read it word for word. Then we went to another Dr. Seuss book, Green Eggs and Ham. Is it Sam I am? <laughs> she loved Green Eggs and Ham. That was the nighttime <clears throat> book to read for her. And again, sometimes as a parent, you're tired. You want the child to go to sleep. So you might try to skip a page. No, we couldn't skip a page. She had the story memorized quickly enough that we could not skip a page. She also understood the story, green eggs and ham. So she didn't want normal scrambled eggs or fried eggs. She wanted her eggs to be green. Like in the book, do you know how hard it is to find food coloring to make eggs green? But as a child, 
it didn't seem to bother her. And then the Berenstein Bear books. And I remember I read these into my childhood as well. And they were the stories of Papa Bear, Mama Bear, Brother Bear, Sister Bear. And much later, they eventually had a third bear. But the different adventures that they went on and the, their lives as they lived in their treehouse. And I really enjoyed them. Now, going back to how important she felt books were, as Linda said, we started off with a cloth book. We made certain everything was safe because you know the cloth's going to wind up in the child's mouth. And she would hold it, she would turn it, and then we got to the cardboard books. Again, she would hold them, and she was always respectful of the books. So we finally started letting her have books with real paper pages. And she was always very careful with them. They were important to her. In fact, one time she had a friend of hers over, I guess they were both, what, 18 to two years old? Yeah, about that. And we didn't know this, but her friend had never held a book with paper pages before. We put them in a playpen in the living room, handed Rachel her book that she wanted, and Rachel shared. And her friend didn't know what to do with the book and started tearing the pages. And Rachel got upset, took the book away, <laughs> and said, no, no. So I came to look to see what they were talking about. And it's like, oh, here, let's give her a hard cardboard book. She doesn't know not to tear the pages. But after that, Rachel wouldn't share her books. From an early age, I was a reader. There was no denying this. So the books that I really remember reading as a child were Where the Sidewalk Ends, which is a book of poetry. It was, they were just like fun, kid-sized poems. And I don't have a copy with me. I'm not sure if there's a copy in my parents' house still. I might have to go look for it. That might be an idea for some Poetry Thursdays. She kind of surprised her school librarian when she wanted to read chapter books. And so the school librarian called me in concerned that she was going over in the books that were set aside for third, fourth, fifth graders. And she was only in first grade. And so I said, well, if, if she's interested, she can read it. You know, it's okay with me. And so she was able to grab any book that interests her and read it. So I don't remember when in elementary school this was, but I remember I got the book from my aunt in elementary school, The Seventh Princess. It might have been older, but I put it in my early childhood section because I don't quite remember when that was. Jennifer had an assignment where she had to do a dream, and she couldn't remember a dream and then went into a fantasy world. I like that idea. Then we introduced them to the library. The idea they had that magic library card. They could go and check out anything they wanted. Well, they weren't really aware of the policies, so they were stacking, stack book after book. You could hardly see at the top of their head. And I was like, whoa, wait a minute, that's too many. But the librarian made their day by saying, oh, honey, you can have as many books as you wanted. So we told her, you can have as many books as you can carry. And then she would bring them home and read them and enjoy them. And we would take them back and they would get more books. And then I just have lumped together the American Girl books. I actually even have my own Kirsten that I got as a, do uh, that I got as a kid. My parents, yeah, spent 80 bucks on this doll. And yes, that's how much it, it costs because I remember getting the magazines and me and my sister, we would like, I want this, I want this, I want this. And my mom like, oh, you want that cloth clothing? And then she'd go just make it because there was no way she was paying $40 for a dress for a doll. <laughs> but when I was a kid, I was just like, oh. So yes, I still have my Kirsten American Girl doll and my sister got Felicity. And those were my two favorite stories. Later, I enjoyed Samantha and I enjoyed Molly. I like the original stories because they were also historical. 
So you kind of got to find out about the lives of the people. I really enjoyed that. Though we did discover there is a downside to your child liking to read, liking to read books. Occasionally she would act up and we would send her to her room and she would go cheerfully off to her room. And then it occurred to us, her room was it's where right. the bookshelf was. So Time Out had to be sitting on the edge of the living room couch. There were no books there. Okay, so for early adolescence, late elementary, like jun into junior high. We would go to places and we would ask Rachel and then Hillary when Hillary came along, where would you like to go? We can go to the zoo. We can do this. We can go do this. We want to go to the bookstore. <coughs> we want to get a book. We spent more time than you would ever think at Barnes and Nobles because that was the bookstore they really liked. And I think every time we went, both girls wound up getting at least one book. Along with loving books and acquiring books, you now need a place to store the books. Bookcase on top of bookcase on top of bookcase, lining the walls, every possible place in the house. I remember reading Rim Walkers by Vicki Grove. And this is about four cousins. The girls are sisters and then the boys are just their cousins. And the older sister and the two boys really bond over this summer. They All four of them go stay at their grandparents' farm. And the older three really get close and the younger one gets left behind. It's about just kind of becoming your own person, but at the same time connecting with your family members. And I remember I just loved that book and I would read it over and over and over. I remember vaguely that she came to my school and did a reading. I don't remember if she did a signing or not, but I she did a reading. It wasn't for, for it wasn't for Rim Walkers, it was one for other stories. That was my first experience of, oh, hey, author fandom kind of thing. And then for the last, I did a series of books, and that is the Boxcar Children series. And yes, I realized that this these were written like in the 1960s, but I really love them. I love the the four siblings and how they work together, especially in that first one, and you get to see like these are kids and they're figuring out how to live on their own. And that was a very appealing idea for me. I was one of those kids where I was just like, I'm just ready to be on my own and live on my own, have my own roles. Now as an adult, I'm like, no, I'm, I'm glad that I wasn't allowed to do that at that age. But as a kid, I, I really thought that would be the best thing for me. These books also very heavily feature foods. And so I remember taking a basket and like filling it like with bread, sandwiches, apples, chips, like whatever easy to eat foods I could find, I would fill this basket with and then I would take it to my room and I'd read the books. And then as I was reading them, if, when they got to a point where they talked about cooking and eating, I would eat something out of my basket. So I guess this is the first time books made me hungry. This is where we start going into I Still Own the Books. The last one I have for this category is Castle in the Attic, and this is about a young boy named William who has had a nanny up to his early adolescence years, and his nanny is now going away. She's retiring, and he's going to be more on his own, and then his parents are going to be more involved in his life, in his childhood life. And he's not very happy about that because he loves his nanny. He doesn't want her to go. But as a going away present, she gives him a castle that her and her brother played with as a kid and a little toy soldier. When he touches the toy soldier, it ends up waking up and ends up it was a curse. He concocts a plan with the toy soldier of a way to keep his nanny and not let her leave. And as you can see, I still own it. I still read it. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Now moving on to adolescence and high school, and this is when I definitely became a fantasy reader. Like wholeheartedly love it. And 
that was in large part thanks to I was wandering a bookshop. I was 16. I wanted something that wasn't from my parents' shelves, and I found In the Hand of a Goddess by Tamara Pierce. And the title caught my eye, the cover caught my eye, and I decided to buy it. And I read it and really enjoyed it. And then I found out that this is book two in a quartet. So I had to go find the first book. I really enjoyed following Alana and her adventures. Alana is pretending to be a boy named Alan as she is working towards her knighthood. Or she's working to become a knight. And in this book, she is a squire. And she's squire to the prince who knows that she is a female. At the beginning of this book, only the prince knows. And later, other people find out as well. This is still my favorite in that quartet. Also, because like I said, became a huge fantasy reader during this time, along with reading everything that I could get my hands on by Tamara Pierce, I read everything I could find by Robin McKinley. And this was my favorite by her, the hero and the crown. And this follows Erin, who is a princess. And she's the princess of the second wife. The first wife didn't have any kids. And there's always been rumors growing up that her mother was not right and hadn't wanted her, had wanted a boy. And this is her coming of age story. And she learns how to be, how to fight dragons. And I just loved it. Funny, funnily enough, yeah, both of the main characters do have red hair. It wasn't something I purposefully went looking for. But my adolescence, I was looking for female heroes, females fighting evil. So finding more female authors and female heroines really did shape what I like to read. Now the other book that was a big deal for me, I got out of the library like every month, and that is The Eagle's Shadow by Nora Martin. And this is about a young girl named Clarice who, she is half Native American, half Irish. She's grown up on military bases because her dad is in the military and her mother died when she was younger. And when her mother died, that put some strain on her relationship with her father. He's not right, really sure what to do with her and gets the opportunity to have her go visit her mother's family in Alaska. Now, her mother was an alcoholic, and so there's some tension between her family members up there. She goes up and she meets her grandmother, her great uncle, and her aunt, and gets to learn about where her mother grew up and kind of see like what life was like and learns a new culture and tries to figure out where she fits in with this culture. At the same time, she's watching the end of a culture and the old way of living kind of fracture and fall apart. And it does heavily talk about alcoholism, especially in the Native community, and how the imposing of white ways upon those communities have also fractured them and have torn apart ways of living that have worked for centuries. Again, it's another coming of age story, and I loved it. Like I said, I took it out every month from the library to read. Well, she's not the only one that loves books. We do too. And she would often go and get in Gary's bookcases and pull his spy novels or war, you know, or science fiction, especially science fiction. And I'd go looking for that. Don't we have that book? Isn't it somewhere? I bet Rachel has it. Mm -hmm. Right. Rachel took it, didn't return it. We're like, okay, it's our book, give it back. So for the young adult years, this was a little bit harder. And I'm not sure I quite got everything for the adult years. I think maybe some of this is still skewed from my adolescence, high school years. Even if I first read them when I was in high school, these are books I continue to read and throughout my college years. And even now, in my adult years. And one of those first ones is the Secret Garden. I'm currently doing a reread of this right now. This follows Mary Lennox as she has come to Mistlethwaite Manor after her parents have died in India. And she's discovering a new way of life and learning to be a better person at the same time as she has found a secret garden. And it's just one of those wonderful books that I like reading. I especially like reading it around springtime 
It's one of the few books that is a very seasonal read for me. Then another book that really worked for me was Rocket Boys by Homer Hickman Jr. The movie October Sky is based off of this book, but this book is has covers so much more than the movie could, obviously. And this was one of my first memoirs. I wanted to be an astronaut as a kid into even a teenager. So I really was enjoying anything I could find that talked about people who worked in the space industry. And Hickman eventually was a rocket scientist, but this is before, this is his life in a town called Colwood. It's a mining town in West Virginia and how he first got interested in science himself. And this has lots of good, just life lessons for even now, which is why I keep reading it. The people you meet here are real and will probably remind you of people from your life as well. I don't know. I just really enjoy it. But this also started me off on the reading memoirs and autobiographies and even biographies of other people working in the space industry and astronauts. So definitely shaped a lot of my nonfiction and memoir reading. And then the last one I have is actually another classic. It is Pride and Prejudice. So funny story about this book. My aunt, the same aunt who gave me The Seventh Princess, gave me Pride and Prejudice one year for Christmas. And I was pissed because I wanted Emma. That was about the time that Gwyneth Paltrow's Emma, like I was watching that a lot. And so I really wanted to read Emma and she gave my sister Emma. Now I'm sure in her mind, she was like, oh, they're gonna share books. And yeah, me and my sister, we shared books, but I wanted Emma. I didn't want Pride and Prejudice. I didn't know anything about Pride and Prejudice. So I was kind of miffed. Took the book with me on to go visit the other side of the family and by the way, this is not the original book she gave me. This is my second copy because the original I read to death. I started reading it on the way home from visiting family on the eight hour car drive, laying in the back seat, and I was hooked. And I loved Lizzie Bennet and Jane and her crazy other sisters and the sauciness and of which her and Mr. Darcy interacted. I loved this book. I have read Emma since, and I didn't like it as much as the movies, but I think I probably, if you're gonna read Jane Austen, don't read Pride and Prejudice first. I would read one of her other ones first and then later read Pride and Prejudice, because I think Pride and Prejudice tends to be a favorite for most people, but it's, each of her books, while making fun of the society or shining lights on things that don't quite make sense or how things should be, also have a different like tenor and flavor. But this did get me more interested in her other works and other so-called classics and started helping me move away from science fiction and fantasy. And like I said, it's one of the ones, like I bought a second copy because I had read the first one to death. The only books that I've done that so far is for this one and Anne of Green Gables, the first book. And Anne of Green Gables barely didn't make this list. So moving on into adulthood. So these are books that I would like to add to my collection one day. There's just so many of them that, you know, I can only buy a book one at a time. I have a list of books here, so I'm trying to still decide what I think are the three that have really most influenced me. And, okay, for the first one we're gonna go with is Micro Adventures by Alistair Humphreys. And this is a nonfiction travel book. I heard first heard about it on a travel podcast and I would like to travel more. That is one of my dream life goals. But the fun thing about micro adventures is it focuses you closer to home and says, what can you, what things can you do in your own backyard? And I really enjoyed that concept because so many times you think, oh, if I'm going to travel or I'm going to go on an adventure, I'm going to go to a far off land or city. And no, you don't have to, you can explore where you are. So that has been a lot of fun. 
And then another book that really touched me was Rising Strong by Brene Brown. This is a nonfiction about, well, what I remember most about is it talked about vulnerability and allowing yourself to be who you are. As you can see from the theme of when I was a young, or when I was an adolescence to now, it's still, I should get to be comfortable with who I am and not have society dictate to me who I should be. And that's how it should be for everyone. Just because society says things should be that way doesn't mean things should actually be that way. We're meant to be different people because if we were all the same, life would be boring. I've lived with someone who thinks a lot like me. And we were very similar personality and it was not fun. There was a lot of friction there until we learned how to work with one another. So it's more fun to get to be around people who aren't the same and even though you still see the same things you have different perspectives and so this was a great really great book it was also really great because the different techniques of talking about things I then got to apply to my own life like one of them being like you give yourself permission to have vulnerabilities you give yourself permission to not be perfect and that those are things that I know have even, I've been able to pass on to my husband. And it's like, you know what? It's okay. It's okay if we experience emotions. We're happy. We're angry. We don't have to hide those things. And it made me more mindful at my current job. I have to poke little kids' fingers and check their iron. And when they start crying because, hey, yeah, I just poked them. It hurts. It's a very natural reaction, and instead of going, oh, shh, shh don't worry, it, it didn't hurt, or it's fine, I'm like, no, I get it, it hurts, and it, it will for a little bit, but I promise it's not going to hurt forever, and I know it always surprises moms and dads, but I, I mostly deal with moms when I say that, because they're just like, oh yeah, I, I guess it does hurt, and it is okay to cry because it hurts, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, their emotions are natural. This isn't, this is what your body does when it gets hurt. It cries, it flinches, it doesn't want the hurt. But as part of becoming an adult is we learn to deal with that hurt. And so this was a really good book for me. And the last one I'm gonna put on here is Vita Nostra by the Dina Checo, a couple. This is actually a more recent read in the last couple of years, and it's more experimental for me. It's a translated fantasy, and I haven't really, it, it's only been in my adulthood that I've really been reading more translated works. And a lot of those translated works tend to be more like serious subjects, so getting into a translated fa fantasy was excellent for me. And just getting to see a different way of viewing the world this is a really hard book to give a synopsis for, and it's very weird at the beginning, like, to the point where I was uncomfortable reading the beginning chapters. And I was thinking I was going to go in a completely different direction, but once she got to her university, then it was still weird, but the thing that was making me uncomfortable was no longer an element in the story. so. I, I did end up really enjoying this book and like I said it made me more aware of there's different perspectives of things out there there's different storytelling mediums ways to tell stories it's good to read translated fiction from other places and I hope to read more so this has been my personal canon and it is a really long video from what I can see so we will see how much I am able to edit this down so you don't have a super long video to watch. She developed an appreciation for books, for stories, for using her imagination rather than doing a video game or something like that. And I think overall that was for the best. Again, this was a great tag by Taylor made between the pages her channel is linked this her version of this video is linked and if you do this please let me know because i really do want to watch it i think that would be fascinating to see thank you and have a great day we're not really at a conclusion 
because her love with books continues as she does her book YouTube channel and writes and uses her imagination. And really, that's what you want.